Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. Today, we're going to talk about other types of life support that is not the ventilator. We've talked about the ventilator plenty of times, but this is not the only type of life support. So before we start, I just want to reiterate what life support is. This is either a medication or device that is supporting somebody's life. Without it, they are most likely to continue to deteriorate and die. And even though somebody is on life support, that does not mean that they will not die. Life support is supporting their body, but their body can still be in a fragile state and too weak to survive despite life support measures. These are just a couple ways that we will support somebody's body while it's trying to heal in the intensive care unit. Vasopressors are a special type of medication that helps increase the blood pressure. Many times people in the intensive care unit are in circulatory shock. This is a condition that drops the blood pressure. We use medications called vasopressors to help increase the blood pressure. We may also use another medication called an inotrope that helps the heart squeeze harder. If somebody started on these medications, they need to undergo two procedures, the insertion of an arterial line, which helps closely monitor the blood pressure since we are giving them a medication that affects their blood pressure, and also a central line, which is the way we administer the medication is through a central line. If you wanna hear more about these procedures, I discuss them in my ICU procedures video. Continuous dialysis is another type of life support. Dialysis in general is considered life support since it is something that is supporting someone's life and without it, they will most likely die since our kidneys are no longer functioning. But in the ICU, someone might need to be on dialysis 24 seven and this is called continuous dialysis or CRRT. Somebody usually needs continuous dialysis when they're in circulatory shock because a typical dialysis session will cause a lot of what we call fluid shifts in the body. The machine is pulling a large volume of blood out, cleaning it and putting it back into the body. Also, it may be removing some extra fluid since people who have end-stage renal disease tend to become volume overloaded. Continuous dialysis does this, but at a very slow rate and it is much gentler on the body. We might not take any fluid off of the body or take a very, very small amount over time. So people who have a low blood pressure might be able to tolerate continuous dialysis better than a typical dialysis session. Reasons why somebody might need dialysis in the ICU in the first place is if they have very severe acute kidney injury that's leading to acidosis that we're not able to control with medications or electrolyte derangements that we're not able to control with medications such as high potassium. And we may also use it for volume removal. Like I said, that is a very slow process if we're not doing a typical hemodialysis session, but sometimes people do need volume removal even though their blood pressure is very low. Continuous dialysis also requires a procedure. The patient will most likely need a temporary dialysis catheter placed if they do not already have a tunnel dialysis catheter. And this is very similar to a central line placement. It's just a slightly larger catheter. And also there are cardiac devices, also known as mechanical circulatory support, that assists the body when the heart is failing or when the body is in cardiogenic shock. The first of these is an intra-aortic balloon pump. So this is a balloon that goes into the aorta, usually through the femoral artery, and it inflates and deflates. And as it inflates and deflates, it assists with pumping the blood around the body. Balloon pumps are most commonly used in cardiogenic shock. An impella is a type of left ventricular assist device or LVAD. This is a temporary LVAD. People may have a permanent LVAD and that, is, that requires a surgical procedure to place. And typically a permanent LVAD is either a bridge to transplant or it's what we call destination therapy. And that means they are not a transplant candidate, but they need a chronic LVAD to stay alive. An impella is a temporary type of LVAD, and it is placed within the left ventricle, helping circulate blood through the left ventricle. So this device sits in the left ventricle, pulls blood in from the left ventricle, 
and then pushes the blood out into the aorta so it can circulate the blood through the body. This is assisting the left ventricle when it has failed. So if somebody's left ventricular ejection fraction, and this is a measure of how much the heart is able to squeeze is low. So if, you're, if your ejection fraction is low, your heart is not squeezing very hard. Then it needs assistance to get the blood to circulate through the body. Sometimes impellas can be used very, very temporarily in the cardiac cath lab during a high-risk procedure because they want the heart support it while they're putting a stent in the heart in a high-risk high patient. It also may be used in the intensive care unit if somebody's ejection fraction or heart function is decreased and we think it could be temporary or myocardiostunning, then we can use an impella to support them through this time as a bridge to recovery. And of course, there are people who may not be able to come off the impella and then there is a discussion of whether they are a transplant candidate or if they are a chronic LVAD candidate or if they do not have any other options. So again, the impella is a device when the left ventricle is not able to squeeze as hard and get blood pumping adequately throughout the body. It will take blood from the left ventricle and push it out into the rest of the circulatory system. ECMO is another type of mechanical circulatory support. There are two types of configurations for ECMO, either VV, venous venous, or VA, venoarterial, and these are used for two separate reasons. VV ECMO is if somebody has very severe respiratory failure and the vent is not enough for them. If their lungs are so sick that even the support from the ventilator is not helping them, that we may consider VV ECMO. We did use this during the COVID pandemic as a bridge to people getting a lung transplantation. So in cases of severe respiratory failure, somebody may go on VV ECMO as a bridge to recovery or a bridge to transplant. VA ECMO is when somebody has either cardiac failure or if they have cardio and pulmonary failure. There are strict criteria for this as well. This may be used in a situation where somebody has cardiac arrest due to a reversible cause, so they may be cannulated for VA ECMO while we have time to reverse the reason for the heart stopping. It may also be used if somebody has an arrhythmia that their heart just will not come out of. Again, it will buy us time to fix the arrhythmia and fix the reason why the patient is having this issue before they're able to come off VA ECMO. There's a lot of new data talking about VA ECMO used in pulmonary embolism, that's blood clot in the lungs. And again, ECMO needs to either be a bridge to recovery or a bridge to transplant. So there are some people who are on ECMO waiting for an organ. So these were just a couple more types of life support that are beyond the ventilator. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more from me, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And you can also follow me over on Instagram at the Intense MD. I'll see you next week in the next video.